Hey everybody, I'm Breck Christopherson with USA Today Network Wisconsin. This is Ricardo Arguello, my colleague with USA Today Net Net Network Wisconsin. And we are at Rocket Stadium uh, here on the campus of Nina High School where uh, the site of our Varsity Game of the Week live stream, we were expecting a heck of a Week 6 showdown between two top-rated teams in the state in Division One, Kimberly and uh, Nina. Well, a funny thing happened on the way to... Uh, what we thought would be a, a knockdown, drag out fight. It was all Kimberly, 38 nothing over the Nina Rockets. And Ricardo, we're, we're going to do your five takeaways as we always do uh, throughout each and every Friday night. But your takeaway from, from what we just saw tonight, uh, uh, if you would have said 38 nothing, if I'd have told you it was going to be a 38 nothing game, what would you, what would you, you said no way. I did no, not, not only say no way, I'm like, what, what, what are you doing? I'm like, are you okay? Did you get <laughs> enough sleep? It was running clock. And let me tell you, Brett, I have seen Kimberly play. Many games, you and I have, and Rosie as well. This was as complete a victory that I have seen, given the opponent, given where they were, and given the time and during the regular season. This is as impressive as any some of those big wins that they've had, you know, in the past. And Coach Jones said the same thing. You know, he said this was our best game that we've played this year. And it's it's shocking that there was a running clock on this Nina team that prides itself on defense. Again, I I, I still can't believe it. I I'm not sure if this could happen again. I, it just maybe it's one of those kind of anomalies, maybe a little bit. Not that Kimberly isn't consistently probably a better team than Nina, given what we've seen. But 38 nothing. Come on. I mean, even that's got that's even the the harshest critic of Nina would be or or Kimberly would be shocked at that one. Oh think? no doubt. I mean, th it became uh, running clock after the uh, 25 yard touchdown run from Caleb Frazier with 11:53 to play in. The fourth quarter made it 38 nothing that capped the scoring. couple things. First, for Kimberly, we haven't seen them since week one right? Uh, when they wow. lost to Fond du Lac. Now, last week we saw Fond du Lac, and that was our first time since seeing them in week one when, when Kimberly and, and, and Fondy played week one. Very, very improved football team. You can say the same for Kimberly and Ricardo. What I saw, and you can kind of expand on it uh, based on what you heard, different guys now are starting to step up that we didn't see in week one. Now you have a three-pronged attack with Frazier, Fisher, and Martzel. Cody Starkel looked very com uh, in command at quarterback. The offensive line and defensive lines controlled the line of scrimmage throughout. You've got Zach Lechner, but all of a sudden you throw in a Trey Tennyson oh. as another receiver, and now <laughs> suddenly... And Winnick. Winnick with and a couple of catches. And Connor Winnick, too. Yeah. Don't forget about him. He had a huge catch there in the, in the second half. Now you're starting to see it all come together, and that's what they're talking about afterwards, right? We just saw Final Act last week. We just saw Kimberly this week. I don't know if Final Act beats Kimberly. I'm telling you right now, this is how razor close these two teams are. I thought I thought Kimberly's win was a little more dominating in my opinion. Just given again, given the opponent, a, a great defense like Nina. Yeah, has. I, I I don't think Fond du Lac beats Kimberly, and this is this is going to play itself later in the season as we know. You're giving Jorgie yeah. some motivation now. <laughs> I know, maybe Jorgie. Apparently, apparently, giving Steve Jones yeah. some motivation. You know, and it's all good, but you know, I'm allowed to do that. I'm allowed to speculate, and and and, and I'll take the heat for it or whatever. But yeah. This is as dominant as Kimberly I've seen this year. They have got to be really excited over there for Kimberly because not just that, Cody Starkle. He look looked, at the development and the yeah. maturation of that kid. He threw that pass to Winnick. That was, Hand, that handful, was on of line. handful of quarterback yeah. receiver combos complete that pass. It was a third and 18 in the state, maybe what? There's maybe a couple. It was uh, a heck of a throw, heck of a that. catch, both ends. Uh, I thought it was uh, outstanding, but it's, it's very interesting to see. Now, Let's hope that maybe we can see Kimberly and Fond du Lac in level four. That would be yeah, a nice be game nice. to live stream at Titan Stadium. Maybe as a, a precursor to uh, what's going to happen at the state tournament or the the, the the carpet, the rug, whatever you call <laughs> Camp Randall Stadium these days. On the other side, though, and we talked about it briefly on the stream, though, what what is the what are the kids on the Nina sideline thinking right now? How big of a loss could this be to their psyche? Because as I said in the webcast. Some of these kids got to be going home right now and, and thinking this through and thinking, well, where are we? Well, well here's, and here's the thing, and I talked to Coach Young about this, and he said, look, we don't have time to worry about that right now. We, we got to prepare for Hortonville next week, and then we get the big Fondy game two weeks from now, and, and they don't have time. This is the VFA. They got to get ready because they have the VFA South title on the line. They're still in, 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 in uh, what, position to possibly get that as well. Take what you can from the film. You got to chuck this behind you because you, you you can't rest now. You you got to keep on pushing forward now, and I guess that's what it is. And, and I think something that he told me, Brett, was like, everyone gets knocked down. Okay, we got knocked down. Okay, we we got really knocked down. Now we'll see what we what, what we are and coming back and dusting ourselves off and see what kind of a team we are. You know, I, I think that's easier said than done. I think there's going to be residual from this game. Okay. Thirty-eight nothing, a thirty-eight point deficit. 
I just, wow, I just think there's going to be a lot of thinking right now, and these kids think, you know, where, where are we? Where are we, as, where are we this season? Are we as close as we thought we were coming into this one? The scoreboard says otherwise. So it's going to be interesting to see how Nina responds. We're going to be back here in two, two weeks, weeks for yeah. that Fond du Lac Nina That'll game. That'll be a good litmus test then. To it, see it's going to be have. a great litmus, litmus test, and it's going to be for the VFA South Championship without a doubt. <coughs> Some other takeaways. What's uh, what's takeaway number two? I suppose uh, you want to talk about. Uh, let me, let's start with Appleton North. Or is this takeaway three? This is takeaway three because we talked about Kimberly and Nina. Who are they? We, we saw them struggling against Kakana, a Kakana team that's basically all offense. You know, they have Van Aston, they have some good receivers. But again, North is so frustrating. It's, I don't know what they are. They're supposed to have a good defense. That's what they hang their head on. But, and then you see they're behind in the first half, and then they have to really rally to kind of pull up that win. Had a big I, second half, and, and, yeah. And, and, you know, they're heading into the Kimberly game this next week that we're going to be at, or I, we will be, I will be. I will be there. You won't be there. But who are they? I don't know who Appleton, I don't, I can't, you can't look at Appleton North and say that's what they can hang their hat on because I don't know. Well, it's hard to say. We saw them at Gerke Field week four, and that was a 56-36 game. Where they, they had a, a heck of a, a battle with Spash. Uh, yeah. A winless team coming into tonight. I think Spash finally won its first game of the season. But we're going to find out who, yeah. who Appleton North is uh, next point. week as they take on a Kimberly team coming off a 38-0 win over Nina. Takeaway four, Ricardo, what do you got? How about the New London Bulldogs? Oh, yeah. Mikhail Harn and the guys over there, they're one win away from getting another playoff berth. Uh, they take out Xavier. I forgot the score, but it was at least by a couple of touchdowns. Very impressive win for New London. Again, this is a team that slowly, Mark Marsh over there, kind of building that team. Uh, they, they gave Menasha last week a run for, the, for its money, and now they come and they take out Xavier. Uh, New London doing some nice things over there, so i got to tip my hat over there again to those guys. I mean, they've been working hard to get that, that program competitive, and now are they at that level now where, okay, now we're competitive. Now let's build on this and possibly push for a Bay Conference title. They're not there yet because right now it's still West of Pier and Menasha. But still, that's a team that's uh, that's a program, I should say, that's evolving, that's getting better. New London Bulldogs, maybe not this year, maybe not next year, but maybe in the near future you will see them, uh, you know, compete compete for that. They big might conference. be at the table with uh, a Xavier yes. and a Seymour as far as maybe that second tier behind, like you say, West of Pierre Menasha right now. New London really making some strides. They yeah. they pushed Menasha pretty hard last week. Last but not least, I know you don't want to talk about that Northeastern yes. Conference race, and specifically, how about the Freedom Irish? 21-13 victory over Luxembourg Castle tonight. That's big. Okay, everyone, you know, we talk, and Brett, you and I, and, and it's w deservedly so. We've talked about Little Shoot and Wrightstown possibly meeting at the end, but Wrightstown still has to play Freedom, and Freedom's not out of this yet, Brett. They're not. They, they still have a shot to knock off Wrightstown, and they've been kind of, ever since that opening season loss to Little Shoot, great team, and okay, they've been okay, just kind of doing their thing, and kind now they take the out Luxembourg. They're definitely Cascos. under the radar right Everyone's now. Everyone's forgetting about us. You know, the Freedom Irish, we've only, we've only you know, had great playoff runs the last couple of years. Yeah. Uh, but, no, watch out for Freedom. Wrightstown, you, you can't look past them. You can't look over to, to the last game of the season because that Freedom Irish team may still have a, something to say, Brett, in that Northeastern Conference championship game. Maybe it is gonna, Maybe they're going to throw a wrench in that final game maybe a little bit. Huh? Maybe it would be a, a tie for the conference <laughs> yeah. title. We'll see. Well, we're, again, we're streaming that uh, little shoot Wrightstown game week nine presuming that it's going to be for the conference championship. But I don't know when that freedom Wrightstown game is, if that's next week or if that's week eight. I know Wrightstown's got a tricky schedule because I, th I think they also have to play Luxembourg Casco in that yeah. and then ending it with Little Shoot. So I just don't know the order of games other than the week nine game. So what else you got? That's it. Is that's that my it? five takeaways, yeah. All right. Well, Rosie, you got anything? Or are we signing off? He's signing We're off. We're starting to get cold. Hey, <laughs> at least at least they kept the mosquitoes away yeah, tonight. Yeah, it uh, was great. I it think Mother Nature gave us a again, reprieve there. This was fantastic. By the way, Nina, we haven't been here in a couple years, but this is beautiful. The, it's the, great the to be back box, here. Yeah. And we'll be back here in a couple weeks. Yeah, so we look forward to it. So, again, uh, the final tonight, 38 nothing. Kimberly uh, uh, up next for the Rockets. They're at Hortonville next Friday. The kickoff is 7 p.m. And, as I said, Kimberly's at Appleton North, a game that we're going to live stream. We're going to go live at 6.45 p.m. on post.cr slash games and, of course, facebook.com slash uh, post So for Ricardo and Rosie, I'm Brett. Have a great week. Have a great night.